get him knocked out from Clonus Ireland, weighing in at nine stone and one pound, 127 pounds, 23 years old, with a record of 24 wins, one loss, 22 knockouts. Number four in the WBC featherweight ratings, Barry McWiggins. The famous Harry Gibbs, Harry Gibbs OBE, who's got about two years more to go as our top referee and he'll be sadly missed when he does retire. Harry Gibbs takes us on and he was appointed at the request of Laporte's manager, Howie Albert. So ten rounds and McGuigan's world ranking right on the line against a very dangerous opponent, the Puerto Rican. From Brooklyn, New York, Juan Laporte. The expert opinion is that Laporte is going to be very very menacing indeed in these opening three or four rounds and the punch to watch for is the right hand McGuigan has come out moving fast and looking to attack Swarthy man in front of him with the experience of six world title fights behind him. <laughs> McGuigan's left hand already darting out and finding the face and the stomach of the porter. Wigan's right eye suddenly looks very red. The left jab flicked out on it. And the skin is blotched. Well, already you can see that the Wigan has got a class opponent in front of him, and he's dangerous. And his own left jab is beginning to work effectively. And he's also producing some good combination punching. And the sign's already very clear indeed that this is going to be a tough one. Laporte doubling up the punches, hitting well to the body. McGuigan setting a fast work rate and the Porter using the ring well and then countering viciously. What a good start. That was a good round between two good men. Well, McGuigan's face just slightly blotched above the eyes, particularly on the right, where a left jab flicked out suddenly and caught him there. But nothing serious, no damage. And a very fast opening round indeed. This could be a classic battle. Well, Laporte looked uh, a good fighter for, right from the off. Good jabs. And watch how he doubles up the punches downstairs too. Puts them plenty together when he gets within range. 
So that corner, Eddie Shaw, the trainer, tending the face of McGuigan, and the manager, Barney Eastwood, leaning through the ropes. That corner already know what they knew before, that they've got a real test ahead of them. Handsome man, Laporte. Left Puerto Rico when he was seven years old and was brought up in the toughest district in New York, the Bedford Stuyvesant area of New York, where he was a street fighter. He really has come up the hard way. And McGuigan most certainly has to win this to maintain credibility in the United States as a challenger for the world title. Good punch downstairs from McGuigan. Seemed all right to me, but Harry Gibbs gave a little sign, keep it up. Gibbs actually has been a judge in two of the Portis Championship fights. McGuigan really getting the punches together well. Speed, again, as so many men have found, Laporte is now finding that it gets through him. The punches are in there before you know they've come. <laughs> totally confident, McGuigan. That's a good left hand still from Laporte. McGuigan has a, a very small nick by the right eye. Beautiful work by McGuigan, and the 40 blinks and backs off. I think the 40 is surprised by the speed of the little Irishman. Premature cries of easy from this crowd. And there is certainly blood by the side of McGuigan's right eye. It's not a serious cut, but he's got a graze of some sort there. a long look at Laporte as he breaks off at the belt and goes back for attention which will be needed to that slight damage at the side of the right eye. Well, Alan Minter, you've had two rounds to have a look at it. What do you think of it? Well, he's boxing very well, Barry. He's, he's pressuring Laporte. He's, he's, I thought Laporte would start boxing a little bit more, but what he's doing is he, uh, McGuigan's drawing Laporte into a, a fighting match. At close range, um, McGuigan's trying in big left hooks to the body, which are, which seem to be telling. I mean, it, they don't look they don't look like they're hurting Harry at this stage. But after two or three rounds of them, I can tell you this: the man will be in big trouble. But he's doing everything what's been asked of him so far. He's boxing very, very well. He's got the fight going the way he wants it at this present moment, Barry. He's so fast, isn't he? This this is what he's, took Clyde Ruin by surprise when he fought yeah. for the British and European titles against he's, Barry. He's, he's very quick. He's long. But the thing is, his body's on the move all the time. His, his shoulders, his head, his waist. So he's a very, he's a moving target all the time. The third round of what promises to be an enthralling fight. He really is brilliant. 
He seems to me to get better in every fight. is at his absolute best here. This is boxing of a very high class indeed from this little Irishman who always seems to rise to the occasion. It's early days and Laporte clearly is still dangerous but he could hardly have made a better start, McGuigan. He really has he really has imposed his boxing on this man beating him to the punch and finding him to head and body almost as he likes. Laporte doesn't know where to go to launch an attack run. And he's getting booed for backing off. And he's standing in there within range of Laporte's punches, but he's so quick to see them coming that the head is bobbing away out of danger before Laporte throws the punch. Laporte swings and misses. The willow of the wisp in front of him. Can't find him, but McGregor most certainly can find him. And you can hardly hear the bell to end the third round. Harry Gibbs is signaling to the time giver. Come on, let's have it louder. But I bet the man was hammering it as hard as he could go, and with the noise in this place, you just can't hear it. Unbelievable noise. And that corner, I'm not too happy with the way things are going. That's clear enough. Howie Albert with the glasses, the manager of Laporte looking through the ropes. And really, they have found a tartar in this young man from Belfast. Just look at some of this action. I mean, these punches, the hooks are going into the body. He goes upstairs, finds him there. He's moving first this way, then that. Laporte doesn't know where the punches are coming from and his own counters are missing by a mile. This is textbook boxing of an extremely high order. Well, Laporte's got to find something to stem the tide here, otherwise McGuigan is able to box there off him. to be careful about the heads, doesn't want a good fight spoiled. Well, McGuigan certainly hasn't uh, cautiously worked his way into this fight. He's gone straight for it from the off. Came out full of confidence and imposed himself at once on the opponent. Just that slight nick on the right eye, the only sign of danger, and it's not troubling him. And Laporte, for all his experience in world title fights against people like Gomez and Sanchez and Pedroza, for all that, puzzled as to how to attack this. And while he thinks about it, he's picked off.
This is a very similar sort of job that McGuigan's doing here to the one he did on Jose Carver, the previous best opponent he's met. He never gives you a breather. Good jabs from Laporte, coming back suddenly, finding the range. from Laporte. He's moved up a gear, Laporte, and he's found a jab to counter well with. And McGuigan seems to be trying to go even faster. thing McGuigan must not do is leave himself open when he attacks, particularly when he just breaks off the attack. If he leaves himself exposed, then Laporte could well have him. But this has been a sensational start by McGuigan. Four rounds completed, and he's well in front. Just the slight anxiety about the, the very small cut at the side of the right eye. It wasn't quite the dominant round for McGuigan this time. He boxed well again. But uh, there were moments towards the end of the round when Laporte began to find him with his own left jab. But these moments were simply all McGuigan. Well, Laporte had one or two little surprises for him. And this right hand, when it comes, would have hurt him if it had been a little lower down. It just caught him slightly high up on the head. But that's the sort of danger that he poses. I mentioned earlier that Laporte had had trouble with the right hand in the fight with Gomez, and he hasn't used it all that much. Now, it may not be the potent weapon it used to be, but I'm sure it still spells danger. And there must never be a moment of relaxation here yeah, for McGregor. If he were to get momentarily careless, it could spell disaster. which is very long indeed for a featherweight and he's using it absolutely beautifully keeping the party out of range for most of the time oh. he just picked him off as he liked again that hit him down in the ribs and flicked it upstairs to the head and the party just stood there and gasped Bergwijn has been known to sicken and frustrate opponents with this sort of boxing, and he may be doing that to the portal. inside from Laporte, still dangerous. McGuigan quite prepared to stay in there with him. 
Might be dangerous. And the first real attack, the first real swinging attack from Laporte. And McGuigan stays inside and tries to keep out of harm's way. That's the first world-class attack from Laporte. Oh, what a good left hook from McGuigan. But he's exposing himself in doing it. This is a dangerous game he's playing. Tremendous fight. Oh, that only just missed that swinging, flailing right hand at the end of that round. Well, I don't know what a fight this is. Alan, if you were Laporte, what would you be thinking at this moment? Well, this is textbook stuff, Harry. This fantastic fight. Um, I was going to say that McGuigan's doing the right thing, but by cutting the corners and not giving Laporte a chance to work, because he's very, you know, I mean, McGuigan's very fast, he moves from the waist, he moves his head, he's a moving target, but then all of a sudden, see, you can't take chances. This man's been the champion of the world, and you've got to respect him from, from the first round to the end of the fight. And we just see then, out of the blue, he's trying a right hook, which caught, thank God, it just caught Barry a little bit above the chin. But he's, you know, you just can't under, underestimate this man. I thought it was one-way traffic just now. I thought it was all Barry McGuigan. But this man has now just come back into the fight and he's, he's hellish dangerous, very dangerous. Yeah, it was a real world-class attack. No doubt about that. You can't help feeling, as Alan was saying, that it's wrong for him to go in and, and start uh, trading punches two-handed. He's got the skill, the movement, speed, everything to handle this man. Why does he want to mix it? I don't think I've ever seen McGuigan so psyched up for a fight as this. He sees the chance of a challenge for the world title dangling in front of him, and he's not going to let it slip if he can help. And he's raised his own form to meet the class of the opponent. The Wigan slipping the leads. coming from Laporte. He made that one very savage attack in the last round. Not been repeated so far. Here it comes. Well, this is of such fierce excitement and quality that uh, it could be a world title fight itself. time the action just breaks off for a bit six round a lot of action a lot of work gone into the previous five and the pace just beginning to tell first six rounds and this is a ten round fight remember over these first six McGuigan has got himself out into a comfortable lead there can't be any question of that and the little man I think is positively enjoying his own skills 
He loves the fight. He loves the atmosphere. He loves the people who support him. And he's absolutely reveling in this fight. The moment's carelessness. Because fighters like Laporte never give up. Laporte now reduced to putting the gloves up, cuffing them up to the head and looking through them to see what's coming. And there's plenty coming his way, believe me. He's reduced him almost to a standstill. I think he's finally breaking Laporte's heart, unless I'm very much mistaken. Laporte throws one and gets four back. A non-stop hail of leather around the head of Laporte. Laporte looks sick at heart, he really does. And there is no, no letdown in the pace at all of McGregor. If anything, he's getting faster. He is being punished unmercifully by McGregor. He may still be dangerous, but it's becoming harder and harder for him to launch a counter-attack under this incessant bombardment. And there was a smile on McGuigan's face just before the bell, because he knew, he knew that he was in total command. Well, those of you who are waiting for match of the day, uh, that will be coming up, of course, right after this fight is over. Meanwhile, let's have a word from Alan Minter. I mean, this man is absolutely brilliant, isn't he? He's doing everything right, Harry. He's boxing well. But I'm, I'm just wondering, I mean, you're talking about Laporte, a former world champion. I'm just waiting to see if he's going to do something. You know, he's, he's getting well beaten. I've made, I made him lose every round by one draw, a draw man in the fifth. I think he's, he's going to come out any minute and he's, he's got to try something. Because, he, because otherwise he's getting well spent. But never been stopped and presumably likely to go the distance. Two to go. Now let's see. Let's see if Juan Laporte, the former world champion, he held the title that McGuigan wants to get. Let's see if Laporte can find something in these final six minutes of action. Something with which to stop this remarkable onslaught that McGuigan has mounted in his home city of Belfast. There's the right hand. Oh, and he caught it full. That was the most dangerous moment yet. Alan was right. He had to find something, and there it was. Now these are the danger moments for McGuigan. The fight so nearly won, and yet, and yet, you don't quite know.
and the courtiers getting all sorts of frantic signs from his corner to come forward, keep throwing punches. It's the only hope. He's got to stop McGuigan now or lose the fight. Tremendous round. He's still dangerous, but McGuigan has taken his best punches. And he's still there, and he's still bobbing about, and he's still scoring. Oh, talk about three minutes of excitement. That really was amazing. And for once, McGuigan looks breathless. It came home to him there, it came home to him that the man in front, despite everything he'd handed him, the man in front of him was still a menace. And it was the right hand, the famous right hand of Laporte, the one that was always likely to be the danger. There it was, that was a full-blooded right hand, and what a good job he didn't uh, connect with the follow-up right as well, because that might have been too much for McGuigan. But Barry took it well, you have to hand it to him. Some more of the Laporte action. The most dangerous moments in the fight for McGuigan, and he's survived them, and there's one round left. And it's all or nothing now for this man. A great roaring crescendo of sound in this King's Hall in Belfast for these final three minutes. They're shouting and they're singing, and they're singing and they're shouting McGuigan on his way home. Less than three minutes now for the Puerto Rican to find the punch that might change everything. Not much time left now between McGuigan and a marvellous victory. He only has to stand there now and see the three minutes out, and he's won. And this brilliant little European and British featherweight champion keeps it up to the end, no relaxing. He's swapping them again. Again, Laporte gets the frantic signals from the corner. Come on, come on, get in there and fight. One minute left. One minute between McGuigan and victory. The hardest man is about to face, and almost all the way. He's handled him brilliantly. Oh, and he staggers the portrait with the right hand. 
He came out of that uh, mix-up of punches there, one tremendous right, and the Porty almost went. Unbelievable excitement in this place. There's only ten seconds to go, and the Porty's a beaten man, the bow's gone, I thought it was coming later, but it's all over. It's all over. And McGregor is a runaway victor. A runaway winner. No question about it. The most brilliant performance of his life against the most dangerous man he's ever met. But he's done it on points. And he's done it in style. And the whole of Belfast tonight will be celebrating. between the two rivals. Marvellous moments. <laughs> Sporting rival, eh? Yes, a, a terribly nice fella, and I think that's a, the general build-up to the fight was that uh, we weren't insulting each other or calling each other names or what have you, like the usual fighters, but um, uh, I thought he's a very nice man, a gentleman, and I just was in there to do a job. Were you worried about the eye at all? Did that worry you? No, I wasn't worried at all. I, I, uh, I realised I had been cut after a couple of rounds, but I just, they told me it was under control, so I just kept on going, you know. He caught you with a good right hand towards the end of the fight, didn't he? That's right, he caught, really me, good. caught me a good shot. Very, very dangerous puncher. I thought he was uh, 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 a very, very slick opponent, and uh, Mr. Reese would tell me to watch his blocking and, uh, you know, keep on top of him and... Uh, Try to pressurise him, and I just try to do my best, you know. Right, you more than did your best. It was Thank brilliant. you very much. Well done. Well Thank done. you very much indeed. Thanks, so much. Thanks very much, Harry. Your channel.